and welcome to episode number 10 of The Scout Scientist. This week I'm doing things a little bit differently and I've roped in a few of my friends to help me out. Now when I've been visiting schools I always ask the students who works in the NHS. The top answer is always doctors and nurses and yes this is correct but it's a shame that no one ever says scientists because we actually make up a huge part of the NHS workforce and we're involved in around 80% of all clinical decisions that are made. So, although you may not see us face to face, we're often working away in the background and the results or services we provide can have a huge impact on patient care. So, I know you've already heard a lot about genomics, but there are actually a lot of other specialisms that require scientists in the NHS. And all the scientists in this video are currently on or have completed the NHS Scientist Training Programme or STP. Perhaps some of these scientists have been involved in your care without you even realising it. So why don't you sit back and watch these scientists tell you a little bit about what they do on a daily basis. Hi, my name is Olivia and I am in my third year of the scientist training programme in andrology. Andrologists work alongside embryologists, doctors and nurses in a fertility clinic and specialise in male fertility. We perform diagnostic semen analyses for men that have been unable to conceive with their partner for the last 12 months and this is the quickest and the easiest way of assessing if there are any problems with the sperm. We prepare sperm for use in assisted reproductive technologies such as in vitro fertilisation and intrauterine insemination which are used to overcome infertility. We can cryopreserve the sperm of patients that are undergoing potentially sterilising treatments for cancer, such as chemotherapy, or prior to transitioning. And we are also involved in sperm donor recruitment, the banking of the donor sperm, and then allocation of it to patients that are otherwise infertile, are in same-sex couples, or are single ladies. Hi everyone, my name is Priyanka and I'm a trainee clinical scientist in cancer genomics. I'm a part of an NHS team based in Manchester that detects genomic variation in cancers and then interprets its significance for patients and families who have had cancer diagnosed. Cancer is a massive increasing problem that we all are likely to face either as a family member friend or patient in our lifetimes. In fact, according to Cancer Research UK, one in two people are likely to be affected by cancer at some point in their lives. In cancer genomics, we sequence the genome of a patient with cancer and make sense of all the masses of data produced. So patients are given best personalized treatment plans. I'm lucky enough to work in an area with a huge future and that is growing rapidly. If you want a career that combines exciting science with patient care to help someone possibly facing the greatest battle of their life, then cancer genomics might be the career for you. Uh, my name is Sam Skinner um, and I'm a second year health informatics STP training in Liverpool. Um, everyone always asks what health informatics is and it's quite a broad topic with projects focusing on using healthcare data to improve the service. Uh, this can involve working directly with patient data to improve health outcomes. Um, for example, my master's project will aim to develop a predictive model for a type of retinopathy um, and that will reduce the number of children unnecessarily screened for the disease. Um, which reduces the amount of time a clinician spends on children that don't need the care, increasing the amount of time they can spend with other children, um, and improves the quality of life uh, for children being screened. Um, and other projects indirectly improve the service. Um, an example of this is an automation project I'm currently working on um, that will reduce the repetitive computer-based work of a genetic screening lab, um, and that should improve their efficiency. and this year I completed the scientist training programme in clinical immunology. 
So clinical immunology is the study of the immune system and how it usually protects the body from harm and also how it can lead to a range of diseases and disorders associated with the immune system. So a clinical scientist in immunology in an NHS lab is involved with the laboratory workup and the clinical interpretation of a range of tests and results that can aid the diagnosis and monitoring of immunological conditions. And this includes things like autoimmunity, so you may have heard of celiac disease or rheumatoid arthritis, hematological malignancies such as multiple myeloma, a type of blood cancer, immunodeficiencies like HIV and AIDS, allergies such as hay fever or a severe nut allergy, and also the response to infections from bacteria and viruses and fungi. So the scientist training programme covers these specialist modules as well as rotations around biochemistry, genetics and haematology and transfusion. And clinical immunology is a really exciting field to be a part of, especially in the current climate. Hi, I'm Alice and I'm a first year respiratory and sleep science trainee on the STP. In respiratory and sleep, we see patients with a wide variety of respiratory disorders, including things like asthma, COPD and lung fibrosis, as well as many other things. We carry out lots of different tests to assess lung function. This includes things such as lung volumes, gas transfer, and exercise tests. We also perform tests to assess and monitor sleep disorders such as sleep apnea. One of the most important parts of our role is patient interaction and building a rapport because a lot of the tests that we perform rely heavily on patient effort and technique and so we have to make sure that we provide sufficient instructions and encouragement to make sure that we get the best out of the patients and get the most accurate results. Every day is different in respiratory because you see so many different patients, all different ages, with different disorders and varying levels of severity. So you never really know what you're going to get and it's always exciting. Hi, my name's Arden and I'm a second year STP studying bioinformatics genomics. The job of a bioinformatician is to develop, maintain and run code to process genetic sequence data in order to identify any variations. This is important because we can identify variants which will be contributing towards or causing a patient's disease, or we can identify genes in family members which they might be susceptible to carry, which might cause disease for them. Day to day on the STP, We'll be writing codes, we'll be using open source bioinformatics tools, and we'll be running the pipelines, which are just big bits of code to process data, uh, which are already in place. An example of a project that I'm working on currently is I'm writing a pipeline to process familial hypercholesterolemia data, which is a germline inherited disease. The code will take genetic sequence data from a patient and it will identify variants relating to familial hypercholesterolemia. Hi, my name is Gemma and I'm one of the trainee critical care scientists here at Royal Papworth Hospital. One of our roles as critical care scientists is bedside imaging using echo and ultrasound. Both of these techniques use high frequency sound waves to produce 2D live images, which can be used for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Um, ultra, an example of the use of ultrasound is visualisation of vessels for vascular access. Hi, I'm Ellen and I'm another one of the training critical care scientists at Papworth Hospital in Cambridge. Another one of our roles is uh, inserting lines for vascular access. So these can include pick lines, central lines and also arterial lines. And these are used for a variety of reasons, for example, administering medications or taking blood samples. My name's Paige and I'm one of the other critical care scientists at Royal Patworth. Um, one of our key roles is troubleshooting equipment such as our MindRay system. The MindRay system is a monitoring system of the patients, so it's crucial that we keep this up to date. Hi. My name is David Walker. I'm a genetic counsellor working at the Birmingham Women's and Children's Trust. 
Genetic counsellors fulfil a unique role as we are able to use our expertise in genetics to support the medical, psychosocial and emotional needs of patients. What this looks like for patients depends on the particular condition as well as the needs and wishes of that particular family. We can help individuals decide whether genetic testing is right for them at that moment in time and we help them to understand, cope with and adapt to both good and bad news as well as communicating this information to their relatives. We will often discuss the possibility of offering genetic testing with appropriate individuals in a family to inform any relevant clinical management for that condition, such as ongoing screening, surgery, medication across all areas of medicine. Whatever your background, working as a genetic counsellor is an opportunity to become a highly skilled clinician with an interest in both the hard science of genetics as well as the more counselling focused aspects of patient care. Hi, I'm Ellie and I'm a first year student on the STP for the specialism of cardiac science. So what do cardiac scientists do? So for me, on a day-to-day -day basis, my main role is uh, performing ECGs, particularly for outpatients just coming into the clinic. But for example, last week I ran a children's clinic in the hospital, so you do get to see a variety of patients. Something else that we do are we uh, are involved in halter monitors, which are heart monitors, and these can be worn from anywhere between 24 hours and seven days, depending on what the referrer is asking for. The patient then brings them back and we download and analyse their data, and this is what you call tape analysis. So we get a report summary and send it off to whoever referred them. You can also do this with a 24 hour blood pressure cuff as well. Um, and something else we can get involved in are exercise stress testing. So this is really to look at how your heart is dealing under stress. And in this case, it's exercise. And we record your ECG and blood pressure during this as well. Uh, something that I am not currently at in my training are um, getting involved in conducting echocardiograms. So these are using ultrasound to look at the overall structure and function of the heart. Um, another option is you can get involved in monitoring patient physiology in what we call uh, PCI, so percutaneous coronary interventions. Uh, an example of that is angioplasty. And if you are interested in that kind of surgical aspect, you can get involved in pacing. So you can help in setting the parameters for someone's pacemaker and then following them up in the clinic. So it really does depend on what you're interested in. Well, that was a lot of information to take in, but hopefully it's given you a better understanding of the many roles of scientists within the NHS. I want to say a huge thank you to every single person who's took the time to tell us a little bit more about their role. Now, just remember, these are just a few of the roles of scientists in the NHS, and there are many, many more. So if you're considering applying for the STP, then you can find out more information on the National School of Healthcare Sciences website. You can also um, email me or get in touch with me on social media to ask any questions or contact the people in the video directly using the details that I've put in the video. Um, finally, I want to say a huge thank you to you for watching the video and as always, if you've enjoyed it or learned something new, then please do share it with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So hopefully next time when I ask you who works in the NHS, the top answer will be scientists. Thanks for watching, see you next time.